Hello everyone. Jesus, after his baptism in the Jordan River, embarked upon his public ministry in the region of Galilee, by announcing the nearness of the kingdom of God and calling people to repent and believe in his gospel. Soon after that, he called four fishermen, namely Andrew, Peter, James and John, to be his disciples and started to teach and preach the good news of God's kingdom. In last week's gospel, we read that Jesus, accompanied by his disciples, went to a fishing village called Capernaum, which was located on the northern shore of Sea of Galilee. There, on Sabbath day, he preached in the local synagogue and also healed a man with an unclean spirit by rebuking the spirit. Amazed by his teaching and perhaps also by his manner of preaching, as well as his demonstration of divine power over evil or demonic forces, the people of Capernaum began to talk about this new teacher and exorcist among them. Meanwhile, after leaving the synagogue, Jesus and his disciples went to the home of his disciples, Simon and Andrew, probably for a meal since the main Sabbath meal was served immediately following the synagogue service. At home, Simon's mother-in-law was lying in bed with a fever. As soon as Jesus arrived, the family told him about her and probably asking him to do something about her illness. Friends, here we do not know anything more about the fever, its intensity, duration, symptoms or its seriousness. It could have been a mild illness which would last only for a few days or a more severe illness that would cause death. Mark simply writes that she was sick with a fever. It presupposes that she was unwell and therefore she was unable to be up and do her household chores. Her normal life had been affected by an illness. Friends, Jesus did not wait to be told a diagnosis. Being the Son of God, he had the power to cure whatever disease had invaded her body. He simply therefore grasped her hand and helped her up. Friends, in the Greek New Testament of the Bible, the word used is ejero, meaning raise. The writer has used the same Greek word in many healings and the raising of the dead, including Jesus being raised from the dead. The word has been used to suggest that new strength is imparted to those who lie low due to illness, unclean spirits, sin or even death, so that they may again rise up to take their place in the world. So, according to the story, Jesus raised or lifted Simon's mother-in-law up and instantly the fever left her. Friends, the story did not end there. She was well enough to get on with the task of serving Jesus and others. Friends, in the Greek text of the Gospel, the writer has used the word diakoneo to mean to serve or to wait upon. The same word has been also used to describe the essence of Jesus' own ministry, that he did not come to be served but to serve. Indeed, serving is the character and nature of our Lord Jesus. It is the way of his love, it is the way of his giving himself to humanity. Friends, at the Last Supper, he demonstrated his greatest act of servant leadership in the washing of his disciples' feet. Not only was Jesus the servant of his people while he lived on earth, he also wanted his disciples to follow his example and serve and help others as well when he said, Whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you shall make himself slave of all. Friends, here the story of Simon's mother-in-law exemplified true discipleship. Needless to say, the news of her healing really spread so quickly and led people to bring all kinds of sick people to Jesus for help. Jesus simply couldn't resist helping those in physical or spiritual pain with whatever power he had. He healed every one of them. But he did not permit those who were healed of the possession of demons to speak 
because they knew him. Indeed, Jesus did not need or want the testimony of the demons. He preached, taught, healed and performed miracles in order to help others, never to call attention to himself. Friends, the next day, while it was still dark, Jesus went to a deserted place. Desert here does not mean a hot and sandy place with little or no vegetation. There is no desert in the vicinity of Capernaum. The Greek word mon means a deserted or lonely or a quiet place. It was a place where he could be alone and pray. However, the people would not leave him alone. As a matter of fact, they pursued him only to tell him that people were looking for him, perhaps for more healings. But Jesus had other plans. He wanted to move on and visit other villages so that he could tell them about the love of God and heal them as well. Friends, what is the message for us today? 1. God did not come into the world in the person of Jesus just to teach us about the establishment of his kingdom, but also came to demonstrate what he really wanted to happen here on earth by healing, delivering and carrying out the work of the kingdom. Friends, Jesus' healing is for today just as much as it was when he walked the earth and performed miracles of healing the sick and disabled. So, we should continue to expect Jesus to heal miraculously all those who are sick as part of the activity in his kingdom. Jesus is the only person who can truly save and heal the sick. Today, let us therefore pray for those who we know are, or whom we have heard or ill, especially the most seriously ill and who cannot provide for themselves in any way because of complete dependence on other people's care. We shall pray that each of them may know and experience the power and depth of God's love, care and the riches of His saving grace. 2. Jesus heals the sick and restores them to good health so that they can serve Him and others in their family and community. He forgives our sins so that we may in turn forgive and love others. Therefore, if we are looking for personal healing, we must pray that Jesus may heal us because we want to serve Him more. If we bring other people who are in need of healing, we must pray that Jesus may heal them and equip them with the power to carry on serving Him and others. Friends, one of the characteristics that should embody every Christian's life is the act of serving and helping others, that is, following the example of Jesus. 3. Jesus wants us to call on Him when we are sick, injured or troubled, and when we do, he sometimes answers us almost immediately, but sometimes He may not answer immediately or as soon as we might want. However, just because we don't have His immediate answer to our prayers in the way we expect, it doesn't mean He is not working in our lives. As a matter of fact, He treats all our prayers seriously. He does not brush us off. But sometimes He is silent, and at the same time, just because he is silent, it doesn't mean he is absent. He just withdraws himself so that we may bestir ourselves and begin to look for him. We may go in search of deserted places and desolate places so as to be alone with him in prayer. Friends, few of us are called to spend many hours in daily prayer, but all of us must make a habit of spending some time every day in silence and solitude, in order to experience the presence of God. The more time we spend time with Him, the more we will get to know Him and His love for us. Amen. God bless you.